Is Michael Bidwell finally starting to get it? Let's discuss. You are Locked On Cardinals. Your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. On Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm still locked out on Twitter. Hopefully on Monday uh, I'll be back. Not really sure what's going on. Uh, you can follow Locked On AZ Cards, and I'm going to start tweeting out more uh, frequently there, especially because I can't, you know, get into my. Uh, at Clancy's Corner account. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked On Arizona Cardinals, hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to go leave a review wherever you get your podcast, uh, I'd appreciate that as well. Um, every day is thanks for being here, whether it be since the beginning in 2017, or if this is your first listen to Locked On Cardinals, thank you. Maybe make Monday your second. We've got a jam show today as we kind of, you know, dance into the into the weekend here. Um, final segment today, I'm going to discuss uh, the punter position. And – the punter position in relation to the last couple seasons and now. So many things have changed, obviously. So many things are different. And the Cardinals are in a completely different position now to be able to kind of manicure little things in the set and forget fashion that I've, you know, that I love for the Cardinals to be able to do. Uh, and I'll discuss that in the second in the last segment. I'm very adamant on the Cardinals not throwing a whole bunch of money at a left tackle. There's a report out that they're going to keep Paris Johnson Jr. at right tackle, which means they could bring in, you know, a bigger name free agent to play on the left side uh, instead of drafting a guy that, you know, th there are left tackles that, that are going to be towards the top of the draft. So we'll see what happens there. But I just don't think that dumping a bunch of cheese to a left tackle specifically, when we've seen things crash and burn when teams have done that, uh, I just don't think it's as prudent, especially when you can get a guy at the top of the draft. And, you know, to start it off, I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to talk about in the first segment today. And uh, I, had, well, I had some ideas. You know, we can talk free agency, do things like that. Darren Urban just put out an article on azcardinals.com, longtime writer for the team. And it was about, you know, streaming services and Michael Bidwell's thoughts on, you know, progressing and, you know, streaming. And, you know, the, the game has never been more accessible, but, you know, things like that. But I read the article and the last couple paragraphs – are fascinating. And let's just take kind of chronology here over Michael Bidwell and really his his relationship with Steve Kahn. I mean, this is going to be a bashing session at all. This is just this is just for uh perspective on what we were experiencing and what we're experiencing now. And sure, it's still very new. You know, uh Tigers don't just lose their zeros don't just lose their stripes. Okay. Tiger stripes, zebra stripes, right? Zebras don't change their stripes, whatever it is. Where we were was Michael Bidwell, who didn't really know what he was doing. And he put his longtime employee and friend, Steve Kyman Power, in 2013 and just kind of let him do his thing. And while obviously he had some input, he was in the, he was in the war room on draft night and things like that. Brought in Bruce Arians, made a couple key signings, was able to trade for DeAndre Hopkins, things like that. I, I, I get that. There was always that kind of stigma like the Cardinals have no direction. What, what's next? The, the idiocy that happened at times. The irrational just thought processes that permeated this organization – just like that's why nobody respects the Cardinals because Michael Bidwell, this was one of my favorite things to say, not because it was enjoyable to say, but it made me look smart, which is, you know, once a month, I give myself a once a month quota. The Arizona Cardinals ran this organization like they won 10 Super Bowls. Don't, we got it. Okay. Look, look at, look at, look at the trophy. Look at, look at the trophy chest. See all the Super Bowls. I know it's a little rudimentary. We've got it. That's how they ran the organization. Like what they were doing had worked forever, and it hadn't. And again, they made an NFC Championship game, which was great. Bruce Arians' years were awesome. Uh, and 
also through that and through even the good the the good times with Cliff Kingsbury, even though they were somewhat more few and far between, there was always that thing like, when is this gonna like when is this gonna stop? When is that big thing that other teams wouldn't have done, the Cardinals will do and just stop themselves from any sort of positive momentum moving forward. Um, all you needed to know about the Bruce Arians is Bruce Arians was fantastic for the city. The Casa organization was awesome. I got to interview him a couple times, like as a part of the show that I used to host, he was incredible. Him, his wife, his son, Jake, they were incredible. They are incredible. The only thing you needed to know about ownership down was after the week one loss, when they were projected Super Bowl, you know, projected to make Super Bowl, projected to make another conference championship at home against the Jimmy Garoppolo-led New England Patriots. When they lost that game, when Chandler Catanzaro missed that field goal on Monday Night Football, I think it was there were two Monday Night Footballs in that game, Monday Night Football games. They were the late one. Missed that field goal, they lose that game. Bruce Arians said they never recovered. After week one, they never recovered. That's ownership down. That's what it was, okay? And that's what, you know, Kevin McKenna, you'll get your shout out again. Like, people who have been fans of this team for 40 years, that's expected now. This function is expected now. Not hoped against, and obviously not hoped for, but expected. Well, when's the other shoe going to drop? When is the mistake going to be made? Why are you prolonging the inevitable? And while I completely understand the thought process, the, the Stockholm syndrome of feeling like that's going to happen, it it is humanistically rational to think that way. And everything that we've seen, since Michael Bidwell actually went through and fired Steve Kime, his close friend, and Cliff Kingsbury, everything that he said he was going to do, he's done. Now, on this podcast, the things that he's done, the, the allegations about how he treats his employees, the allegations about how he treats uh, the families of, uh, of, empl- uh, of players, that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, that the, the, Mc, the McDonough uh, lawsuit, all of those things. This is a football podcast right now. Okay, well, it is a football podcast. And these are the things I'm speaking specifically about. If that were to intertwine more with this team, it will be discussed. But for now, what we're talking about on the surface of him as an owner, him hiring people, putting them in position of power, and letting them do their job, that's something that while he's tried to do that in the past, do that in the past he had the wrong people in power. Now, going back to this article uh, that Darren Urban wrote from azcardinals.com, it was against, you know, it, it's never been more accessible to, to watch games and stuff. That, that's how the, the article started. But this is how the article, last couple little paragraphs here. This is a quote from Darren Urban's article. The owner also stated he was, quote, super excited about the free agent plans of GM Monty Austin for it, even if at this stage the Arizona Cardinals can't be completely sure what players hit the market. And this is a quote from Bidwell. I go back to the extension of Kyler Murray, and we were spending on the foundational parts of this roster. When you look at going into this free agency period, I don't know exactly what we're going to spend, but Monty knows he's got the resources to get the job done. We've talked about it at length. He continues. He's going to be smart about it. We know we are close, and we also know that we have we have been some changes. There have been some changes in the NFC West, and it's time for us to take advantage of that opportunity. Monty knows he's got the resources to get the job done. That's not saying, oh, that we've got some cap space. That is an owner who says, I hired somebody, that's his job. I'm not going to meddle. And he hired a guy with experience at the highest level, multiple Super Bowls he he was a part of, and a guy who knocked last year's draft out of the park, as far as we know, with the information that we've been given up until this point. That is a massive shift in Michael Bidwell. Massive. And those aren't like, you know, you know, we, he didn't say we, he said Monty. He didn't say we, he said Monty. And these things, well, you know, Bidwell never change. What makes you think he'll ever change? I'm not saying he will fully. I'm not saying this will last. But what I do know is since firing the last regime, he's done everything he said he was going to do in an effort to shift the trajectory of this organization. So you have to grade on that and not what's happened in the past and not what could maybe happen in the future. Michael Bidwell has gotten an A since firing Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury, and that's just the truth. 
We'll see if it continues. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Um, the Cardinals should not throw a whole bunch of money at an offensive lineman on the left side. And I think that doing that would be potentially a massive roadblock. If it didn't work, a lot of times it doesn't. And that is a whole lot of money to put it on, on the left tackle. If you could just draft the top one in the draft. We'll discuss that next as we roll on here. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventures to the next level. How about this? 2024 Nissan Rogue. Perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right in to the 12.3-inch touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. How about the 2024 Nissan Armada? We'll change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. And I never thought that I would discuss this about Michael Bidwell, but it's like you're kind of waiting. And, and, you know, I've worked in sports radio for, you know, over a decade here, and I've been doing this podcast since 2017. Like, yeah, I you expect things to not change. You expect things to kind of, you know, like Punxsutawney Phil pop out and then six more weeks of winter. And it just hasn't happened yet. And this a lot of this is future-paced. A lot of this is wait and see. But – Mike, let me just read this quote again. Get from Darren Urban, azcardinals.com, his article this morning. I don't know exactly where we are going to spend, but Monty Austin Fort knows he's got the resources to get the job done. Monty has the resources. And this could be splitting it. Well, that doesn't mean anything. He said that before. If this doesn't feel different to you, you and I are just going to disagree. And I know it's hard to make Michael Bidwell not look like a villain because he has been. He's been eagle maniacal. He's been a terrible boss. He's had lawsuits thrown against him. He's devoid of rational thought and actual understanding of how the real world works in sports at times. I know, understand. I've seen it. I know that. And everything he's done since firing Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury, he's done everything he said he was going to do. And as well as it could have with your franchise quarterback out for half the year, bringing in Joshua Dobbs after, you know, starting week one after not being with the team for, for two weeks. It's worked. It's worked. And it's different. And there are possibilities to skyrocket this. And isn't that all you want is possibilities? Yes. Isn't that all you want is an owner that lets his GM do his job. And the best part about really successful business people, they don't do every job. They hire the right people and let them work. And it seems like Michael Bidwell has figured out last GM wasn't the right guy. This one is or is, you know, pacing to be. I'm going to give him the resources. I'm going to let him do his job. And we'll see. Monty Osford's one for one. So we'll see what happens. Oh, and Monty Osborne went on uh, Arizona Sports yesterday, said, you know, they're going to be they're going to be active in free agency. Cool. I don't know. Oh, oh they're going to be active in free agency. No bleep. They didn't do anything last offseason aside from bringing Kazir White. OK, they're obviously going to add players. This isn't a revelation. This is a normal offseason. And then next offseason is going to be like flipping Disneyland with the amount of cap space they're going to have. One thing the Arizona Cardinals should not do, in my humblest of opinion, is throw big money at a left tackle. Okay. And while I understand that if you're guaranteed, like Trent Williams is one of one, okay. They gave him all the money and all the land. And he's been the best player on the team without Trent Williams. They don't win half the games. Probably they don't win 30% of the games that they win. He got hurt for a couple of games last year and they lost both. I mean, it's just normally, this isn't always, but normally, when a star left tackle wants to get paid and the team 
that had him before doesn't want to pay him. Like Orlando Brown was one. The Chiefs were going to give him a whole bunch of money. He didn't like the guarantee, so he went to Cincinnati. Normally, the money that needs to be spent to land that star left tackle is massive. Massive. So the Cardinals have three options. One, draft the left tackle. And say, you know what? Go. And because the reports out that he's gonna that Paris Johnson Jr. is gonna play right tackle. I, I I can't help but think that like they're gonna sign a left guard at some point. I mean, you gotta bring in veteran talent on the inside. You just have to do that. Like there, this isn't like a learning curve thing. You gotta you gotta bring in a left guard. You gotta bring in a left guard. So the left tackle position is do you, do you like if Marvin Harrison Jr. not there, are they prepping for Marvin Harrison Jr. not there to just draft Joe Alt, the six eight left tackle out of Notre Dame, and you just keep Paris Johnson Jr. on the right? If so, you have your bookends for the next decade, okay? So that's one. Two, you throw big money at a left tackle, hoping a plug-and-play, set-and-forget, don't worry about the future because your left tackle is shorn up and you have your bookends for the future. One guy's just, you know, 27 and he's expensive. Or, you know, you got a 22-year-old that's coming out of the draft that's going to be on a rookie-scale contract. That's two. Or, which is, I think, I mean, it's, again, splitting hairs here, but, can you bring in a serviceable left tackle? Like, what does a serviceable left tackle look like? What is a what is a stop gap stop gap left tackle look like when you've got so much tackle talent towards the top of this draft? Why bring in a one year, two year like Kelvin Beecham kind of deal? Kelvin Beecham was brought in because Josh Jones wasn't ready. And Kelvin Beecham has been like, I'll give Steve Kime credit where credit is due. The Trey McBride. Like he fell into that and it worked out for the Cardinals. It was a terrible draft pick with the, with the roster construction, but it worked out for the Cardinals now. Okay, one. Two, Kelvin Beecham may be the best. James Conner probably is. Yeah, James Conner is probably the best free agent signing, especially at the contract level. I think he got 1.25 or 1.3 on a one-year deal initially. Kelvin Beecham got right around that or less for a one-year and then signed a two-year $4 million extension, I believe. Kelvin Beach has been great, and he'll be your swing tackle if he's healthy. He's a great plug-and-play guy when you need it at times. It's like a backup quarterback. Spot starting is fine for injuries. But you can't go sign a left tackle and have it not work, especially if you pay him a whole bunch of money. Because not only is that, you know, a hit to the cap. But also, that impact will be felt immediately. And you'll be forced to play him, even if he's not the best left tackle on the team, because he's making all the money. And then that could open up Kyler Murray to injury. And then, you know, on and on down the list, the chain reaction. Now, while that may or may not happen, I feel like the Cardinals, pass rush, interior defensive line, corner, most of the money should be allocated to the defense this offseason. And if they decide, like, this is all, and I know that, you know, the draft is after free agency, so it will kind of be figured out. There's plenty of tackle talent in this draft. Plenty. And good tackle talent. So say the Cardinals want to bring in a left guard, which they definitely should. Ezra Cleveland is a name. Um, and we'll go down the list as we get like much closer to free agency, especially with the with the tackle positions and guard and the offensive line and stuff. Um, if they, they need to bring in a left guard, regardless of what they do in free agency in the draft, otherwise. But if you look at four, and Marvin Harrison Jr. is there, okay, you take him, and then you want to move up from twenty seven and draft Tyler Guyton, who's who's a hot name, who's going to go. There are mock drafts where he's going around twenty seven. He ain't going around twenty seven. He'll be top fifteen. I'm going to get Dame from Locked On NFL Draft. We got some of the best draft minds in the business at locked on they're like ain't no way he's gonna be there so i trust that so if you want to do that and you want to package a future pick or package two of the third whatever whatever it is to move up and get your guy fine or if marvin harrison jr is gone and you think that he's going to be gone and you're going into this offseason expecting him to be gone and you not wanting to draft Malik Namers or Roma Dunze at four, and you know that you can move back a couple spots, pick up a second, and draft your offensive lineman then, and then maybe package that second and 27 and move back up to draft a wide receiver. We've seen it all happen before. We saw it happen last year. But I think the one thing the Cardinals need to shy away from is giving massive money to a left tackle. 
this offseason. The risk reward is the risk is so high, especially for the money that, that person's going to garner. We will see. It's going to be fascinating, man. Like, again, when I said that Monty Osborne, this is a choose your own adventure thing for the future of the team, it truly is. They could go every which way. We have no idea what path they're going to take. And I'm so excited to start to see these question marks go into boxes that are checked so we can really have a clear idea of what their, you know, what their game plan is going to be going into the draft in April. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. The Cardinals should sign a new punter. His name is Tommy Townsend. He's going to be a free agent. And the Cardinals need to go get him. And I'm going to explain why this is the perfect time for that to happen next as we roll on here. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. All right, big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let things out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So, Today, I, you know, I, I want to really tell you how I feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. I hope that the New England Patriots don't draft Marvin Harrison Jr. This is starting to like weigh on me in a sense where it's like, it'll be a total mind screw, okay? And it's something that the Cardinals need something to bounce their way. And this isn't like a, oh, poor, poor Cardinals. Oh, nothing ever goes their way. That's not true. And this hopefully will bounce their way. Give them the opportunity to do as they choose, be proactive instead of reactive. Therapy can be different for everyone. And most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports team. And it's important to get things off your chest once in a while. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suitable to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked. Michael Bidwell is turning over a new leaf. Great article by Darren Urban, um, azcardinals.com. It's up. It was up about, you know, an hour and a half ago. Um, please don't dump money to a left tackle, 40 mil guarantee, whatever it is. I, I just don't think it's the right time. They may be, especially with their draft position, especially with the, the tackles and offensive linemen that are in this draft. If the report is true that they're keeping Paris Johnson Jr. on the right side, it kind of narrows down opportunities because there are some right tackles that could go around the 27 mark. But if they're keeping him a right tackle, that kind of be null and void. Uh, and the Cardinals need to sign Tommy Townsend. And Tommy Townsend, for those that don't know, was the former Chiefs punter, uh, won two Super Bowls, was the one who punted the ball off the special teamer from the 49ers' ankle that allowed the Chiefs to recover the ball. It was all skill. No luck. It was all skill. Um, they're bringing in punt god, the kicker from uh, Buffalo who was cut because of rape allegations that were expunged and they're bringing him in. Uh, Tommy Towns is a free agent. And listen, the punting of Nolan Cooney and Blake Gillikin last year was underwhelming. Nolan Cooney made it through a handful of weeks. Blake Gillikin was fine at times, but this is, this is bigger. And I preface this in, in the beginning of the show. This is the perfect time for the Arizona Cardinals to do the little things. Andy Lee was massive for this team. Massive. Matt Prater has been massive for the Arizona Cardinals. Massive. And the Arizona Cardinals special teams was pretty good last year. The punting wasn't great. If you can bring in a guy who was an all-pro in 2022, if you can bring in a guy, it'll cost nothing compared to what you bring in for other players. Sign him to a three-year deal. You've got your punter set and forget. Special teams, kicker, punter, set and forget. And this is the perfect time for this because the Cardinals need to be able to do those things right so they can focus on other things. They need to be able to – you can't have a situation where it's like, oh, the offense, much improved. The defense, massively improved. Special teams, not great. Can't do it. Tommy, guys like Tommy Townsend don't become free agents very often. So going into this offseason, if you can check that box and you've got a guy who's not 30 yet, who can punt with you for the next handful of years, and you don't have to worry about that, do it. He's got great, he's got great personality. Like, he'd be great for this team. 
be great. He'd be fantastic. And I think this is something that while, oh, it's not important right now. Yes, it is. Just because there's other things that are important doesn't mean this isn't also. The list is like Rapunzel's hair long for important things here. Arizona Cardinals need to do this offseason. And one of them is find a punter they can trust. And I think that Tommy Townsend can fall into your lap and you look back five years from now and be like, wow, what a huge move by Monty Austin for it. Cardinals have top five special teams in, in, in the NFL. They need to be able to do those things right so they don't get in their own way in an effort to completely rebuild the culture and functionality of this organization. And I'm not saying that, that signing a punter is going to make this team functional. I'm saying that signing a punter like him will allow just another set and forget position. You don't have to worry about having elite production on game day. And for the, for the Cardinals, they need as many of those as they can get, especially the price tag that he would come with, which is a fraction of what any other position would garner. Remember, without you, there is no me. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you Monday.